Okay, what I'm going to show you here is a little bit about what StructureWorks PDM does and how it works. Uh, traditionally, we would have a file server and a database server that the clients would connect to and, and retrieve all of their files from the file server through the network. And the idea that we want to achieve here with the PDM is to make it so the stuff that's on the file server on the network gets brought locally down to the user. So if you look at this diagram on the screen here, what you'd see is you have a file server, you have a database server, and traditionally these two would interact with each other while the client machine interacts with both of them. But what's happening now is the files and everything are stored on the file server and they would get checked out to a client PC. That client PC is now interacting with the database server directly. Um, so they'll check files out, work on them, and check them back in. When they're checked back in, other, one, other users can check them out and bring them local on their machine. Now what the vault does for us is it allows us to manage the read-only states, the read-write states of all the files. So it, it holds the most up-to-date versions that people are ready to allow other people to use. Okay, so let's go into StructureWorks and see how the PDM tools work. And we refer to them as collaboration. So if we go into StructureWorks, um, we'll see this button over here, StructureWorks Collaboration. StructureWorks Collaboration holds a couple different things. It holds the Collaboration tab, it holds the BIM Import and Export as well. Okay, So in the Collaboration tab, uh, we can double click on here and hit the drop down and see any jobs that are available. And we can select a job and hit Go. And what that'll do is that'll bring up this list of it's basically the tree of the job. Okay, it's very similar to the job manager in that sense. Uh, we'll see all the files that are available, and so we have the collaboration area here. We have documents, we have checked out, and we have job library items. Now we have this series of new buttons. Okay, uh, let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, this will refresh our view. So if the view, if you're in the middle of doing things and you ever want to update this, you can just hit refresh view. Um, you can check out all without read write access and refresh the view at the same time. So checking something out will bring it local. We have check in states and we have two different states here. We have check in and release read write access and then check in and retain read write access. Okay, so you know we may want to check something in and keep working on it because if we have multiple people working on a project we may finish one little area uh, but we're still working on an entire substructure but somebody wants to be working on building production assemblies so we can save save it here on our local machine check it in and retain here we go check it in and retain read write access so we'll check it in the safe state that we're at so that somebody else can check it out and you see here we have check out with read write access, check it out without read write access, um, and undo pending changes and release read write access. So, you know, a lot of people that are doing production assembly type work will maybe check out a bay, right, a substructure without read write access. They don't need read write access to those components. What they would want to do is they want to check out with with read write access things like production assemblies, uh, you know all of the reinforcing that goes into a product. Um, they're going to want read write access to that, but the actual product and the um, substructure that it lives in, they don't need read write access for that. Okay, so what I'm looking at here, you can see I've got some colors here, um, and there's a little settings item, so we can you can change your colors, but um, entities created but not checked in. Entity exists on the server, configuration, entity configuration mismatch, um, entity is checked out for read, and entity, entity is checked out for read write. So you can see here these are checked out for read write in red. Um, these in black say they're checked out for read. Okay, and we can expand this and see some of the different scenarios that might, well, maybe they're all checked out right now. Um, yeah, everything's checked out for read on this. 
So let's go ahead and open this so I can right click and open this. Because it is checked out for read, that means it's local on my computer and I have read write access to this, right? Checked out for read write. I have read write access for, for this. Nobody else can actually gain read write access to this now. So let me go ahead and hit open and this will open this substructure for me. And I may want to do some work on this, um, make some changes to this, but when I do, whatever changes I make, I might want to get that out to somebody um, so that they can actually continue to work. So let's, let's just see some things that we can do here. Okay, and this is something that you'll see here too, going to 2016. You see that this says older file version. The first time you open something that is an older file version, it's going to take a little bit longer. It's got to convert from the version that you're, in, you know, you currently made that to into a newer version. So we want to update these uh, to the newer file versions. The next time these open, they'll be faster. And you know, one of the main points behind PDM, there, there's two main reasons for the PDM. One, when you're working local, it is faster. We have the opportunity to have fast hard drives um, in our PCs, but we also we don't have to worry about the latency of taking information across the network. Uh, the other scenario is uh, stability of the model. When you're working local, your model is always more stable rather than if you're working on a network. So because uh, there's a lot of traffic on a network and you could lose information as you're saving and opening. So uh, SolidWorks always recommends that you work locally. Okay, so here we've got our model. Okay, and let's say that I want to do something with this, then um, update the network, right? Update the network so another user would be able to check it out. Um, so here Let's say that I wanted to take this wall right here and add a door to it or something, right? So let me just open this, open the product, and this guy here, I will go ahead and um, open the part and add a, add a little door to it, I guess. Okay, so here's a little door added to that. Um, and so it looks like my V-Pocket needs to move because of the door. And that's based off of the sketch. So now that I have this, I can do a couple different things. Here, if I go over to the collaboration area and refresh it, um, I'm in wall well, in 13006 wall 01 solid assembly. Um, so I can look for 13006 wall, right? And I can start searching for that. Um, I can look at like specific mark numbers and stuff. So here I can go for 0811A. W08. And you see it starts picking up um, what's available here. 
right? Um, so if I look for that, I have the product, and from here, I have the ability to open things and whatnot. Um, So the tower is going to be in the self, A8, and wall O1. So this guy right here. So let's say that I wanted to um, just upload just this. I didn't uh, care about the whole substructure. I can just right click on this and say check in, retain, read, write. When I check that in, retain, read, write, that's going to take that file, copy it up local to the server. Um, so that anybody else that wants to work on this can check that out with write access only with write, uh, I'm sorry only with read access and now work on that to do the production assembly stuff okay um, or I can just come over here and grab my structure and then say check in retain read write so I can just check the whole thing in um, and when I select it it goes down the whole list so I can say check in retain read write and it's going to go through and it's going to check everything and anything that's saved. And in this case, it's a good idea to do this because um, I saved the entire model as a 2016 version rather than a um, just a little change like a door. So everything updated. Okay, so it says failed to check in the following entities. Um, and they were already checked in. So these items weren't checked out. They were selected, but they weren't checked out. So that's okay. Um, so it may let you select a whole bunch of stuff um, that wasn't checked out, and then it'll just say, hey, you can't check them in, they weren't checked out, so that you can't overwrite something. Okay, um, so let me close this. So now you see I have my door in there and everything. Um, and I'm actually going to save this. I didn't save the structure, but I uploaded it. Um, so I'd probably want to check that back into. All right, so that's saved, and select this, and now I can check in. Now, here's the th interesting thing. You can see um, documents that you might want to be able to manage as well um, in here. You can click to add collaboration documents, remove selected collaboration documents. So if there are certain documents that you want to add into collaboration that can be managed through the PDM, you can. Um, you can see all the items that are checked out. Okay. And then you can see all the items that are pending a check-in. So these are all the items that when I hit save, just got updated on the save okay um, so these all these items still need to be checked in right so we got to check in with read write oops let's go over here check in retain write okay okay let's go ahead and check in and release read write and see what happens to our tree so i'm going to check in and release read write got to select your model and this is this should turn from red once it's done to um gray probably okay it's black because it is still it is still checked out. Okay, so since it's still local on my machine, it is still checked out on my machine because I do have the local version of it, um, but it's only checked out for read. Okay, um, so if I ever want it to be checked out for read write, I want to get it to be read. Okay, so if I want that back, I'd have to come over here and say check out with read write access. And if you look at our pendings, there's no pendings, check-ins for this. 
So everything is there, is checked in. Um, at any point, you can select this, and instead of using these buttons here, you can right click and choose check in, check out, undo pending changes. Uh, if we look at our checkout tab, there's nothing in there. And if we look at our job library tab, these are all the items in the job library um, that are available. Okay. So we can check in any of those items. Um, if we had just created them. Now those items will get checked in if you have the production assembly checked. So here we see the production assembly. Those items exist inside the production assemblies as well. So they'll get checked in. If we have that top level selected. So as you can see, there's a fair amount of new functionality wrapped around this. The job manager still works once everything's checked out uh, on your local machine, so you don't have to work solely through here uh, for opening files that are all checked out. So you can still use the job manager to do that. So this, to, this is still a very useful tool uh, for getting the files that you need as long as they're checked out. Um, and, you know, the idea was to make this user interface and these tools simple to use. Um, and this is a first release on this, so I'm sure there will be functionality that is, will be requested. So as you guys are using this, um, you know, we highly recommend make some notes, let us know what your needs are, and we will work very diligently to in implement any new functionality that would be requested.